What would make this an especially meaningful conversation for you today? Um, so as you know, I'm taking the LSAT on Monday, so um, I'm not learning to like learn any, you know, big strategies or anything, but I guess just any like final tips you have for like tightening up those especially um, complex like logic rule notations, um, like that example I sent you of like, if it is not the case that both are in, then two are out or something like that. And I, I, I worked through that a bit more and like now I'm understanding that a bit better, but just curveballs that are especially like, you know, unexpected or um, uncommon, um, <laughs> kind of how to handle those. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So a couple of things. I would suggest one, the game that you referenced from the super prep, it's an old game. It's, it's, it's an especially difficult game. I know that you've got it now. The thing you would do to improve on those is do several grouping in out games of that type. And I have a big list of games that are very similar to that one that I can send you that you might want to drill over mm -hmm. the next day or two. Yeah. And with regard to curveball games, I have a big list of those as well. Now, okay. I wouldn't say don't do all of them between now and Monday. That's way too much work. At this point, it's kind of all more about wrapping up. But if doing a couple of those would help you feel more comfortable, then I would recommend working on those. Okay, yeah. So what's your plan between now and Monday? Because it's only a few days. Right, I mean, so I mean, just, I am doing the, um, the Khan Academy LSAT prep, and so they, they've been like a lot of, you know, they like kind of optimize like whatever um, like your weakest areas are. And so for like lately, that's, it's mainly just been like redoing a lot, a bunch of games and passages and questions. So I've just been like doing those sets um, and then doing practice tests. And I've hit my goal score a couple times of 170, but I just want to, you know, be extra confident and sure going in. Um, sure. I, yeah. I haven't like, I haven't like gotten better than 170. So that's how that makes me a little bit nervous if I'm hoping to hit that. How many tests are you going to do before Monday? Maybe you just one? Um, probably one tomorrow and one Saturday or Sunday. Okay. My recommendation is to do only one more. If, yeah. Aside from if you're not doing anything else today. I'd say okay. either Friday or Saturday, but have that be it. Sunday, the day before, that's your day to rest so that you can walk in fresh on Monday. Okay. And you also want to review these exams too, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> so if you are scoring around a hypothetical, let's say 170, Mm -hmm. That means you're getting about 10 questions wrong. But there's yeah. also probably another 10 to 15 questions that you guessed on and got lucky or weren't 100% sure on, but it could have gone the other way. So it's worth reviewing those also. Okay. So 25 questions, if you're spending 10 minutes per question, that's already well over three hours. Right. Maybe even four hours. So that's all, that'll take up all your remaining time aside from doing a little bit of extra games drilling like we talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Have you worked through a lot of the exams in the 80s? Um, I don't, like, so most of the exams I've been doing have been the ones that, like, Khan Academy just, like, gives you, like, on your, like, schedule. So I'm not sure when those are from. And then I, I had, like, a bunch of books that I was, like, working through before I started the Khan Academy stuff. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know exactly, like, when um, these exams are from. Okay, the Khan Academy ones are fairly recent, and I don't want to tell you to do anything differently okay. in the last couple of days that we have. Are you considering a potential retake down the line? Um, so, I mean, I'm applying this, like, season, so I don't know if, like, timing would necessarily work out, especially for, like, early action, early decision schools um, sure. in, like, November. If, yeah, if, like, if it doesn't work out... Like, I guess I would technically have it in time to t for like the January deadline. So that's like potential. But. Okay. Yeah. If you, have, if you do decide to retake, let me know because I can definitely give you some more tailored recommendations for that around yeah. using more recent exams. And also know that November is only four weeks away. And so if you're not totally confident, you're going to get significantly into the 170s this Monday. November is only four weeks away. You could take that and still apply relatively early in the cycle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't need to, I'm not like aiming for like a 175 or anything. It's just like that 170 like benchmark is yeah. <laughs> what I'm hoping for. Yeah. I totally get you. So what are your other plans in the next couple of days? Or do you have any questions on what to do the day before or the day of or test day preparation? Uh, yeah, generally, like I don't, um, besides like taking like the SAT and ACT, I haven't like taken any like high stakes tests and like, yeah, since, well, that was like years ago. So um, 
I guess generally like what you would recommend? <laughs> sure. So I, like I said, Sunday, rest, take a hot bath, go to the park, binge watch Netflix, whatever you like to do to relax. But you could also prepare your test day Ziploc bag, right? So your admission ticket, your number two pencils, mm -hmm. any test day snacks, any warm up questions you could do right before you enter. So a favorite game, a favorite passage, a couple of logical reasoning questions, just so that the first thing you're doing on test day is not the actual scored sections. There's yeah. also mm -hmm. any digital LSAT prep specifics you might want to work out. You said you've been doing Khan Academy. Have you also done the, the questions on LSAC's familiarization tool? I haven't. Okay, so take a look at that. It's at familiar.lsac.org. And that is, the, of course, the best, or best sample or simulation of what the test day experience will be like. Because Khan doesn't do it perfectly, but LSAC's site does. So okay. Do you have a tablet? I do. Perfect. What kind? Uh, iPad. Great. Yeah, that's excellent. So go on the iPad, go to that website, familiar.lsac.org, and just play around with it a little bit to get a sense of what the tools are like, like the highlighting, the underlining, the, the narrowing of your field division to only one question at a time, the okay. countdown timer, things like that. This is a good yeah. opportunity to expose yourself to it now. Not like you're working through the questions for the content, but just to get a sense of what the flow is like, because right. it is a little bit different. Yeah. So for like, so you said like there's a highlighter for, um, for like um, the reading passages, I'm assuming. For the, whole, for the whole exam, you okay. can highlight and underline. Right. It's not incredibly responsive, so I wouldn't rely on it. Okay. You do get a, a booklet of scratch paper, so you could do all your work on the side. And that's really what I would focus on in terms of any kind of notations. Right. And I, you don't, like, it's, it's all with your finger, right? So you'd be highlighting like with your finger and underlining. Yeah, they, do, they give you a stylus, but it's not that great. So I would use your finger instead. But okay. even then, the highlighting under, and underlining doesn't work that well. So I would instead not even use those tools at all, although they're, although they're available to you. And I would instead just do any note taking on the side. Okay. Yeah. I haven't, I don't generally like take notes or annotate on reading. Um, cause I, I get through it like pretty quickly. I usually have like seven, eight, even nine minutes left over after reading. So I can usually go over stuff. Um, I don't know if it would be time better spent, like more taking notes and summarizing and stuff. You might do a little bit of light note taking, but the, I find the students who do the best on reading comp tend to mark very little or not at all. Cause it takes time to write things down. It takes time to read them. Yeah, I know. I think that's like reading comp is where I have like the smallest like budget for like, I want to go like minus like one or two on that. And that's generally my strongest section. So amazing. Yeah, that's, that's great. Cause reading comp is the hardest to improve upon significantly. So if you're already good there, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. It's mostly logic games. That was the focus of most of my studying. And then I obviously like went through like one or two big um, uh, logical reasoning books, but. Good. Good. So yeah, just in these last couple of days, work on the grouping games, work on the curveball games a little bit. I'd say that's where you should focus your time for now, aside from doing one more full-length exam and yeah. reviewing that. But again, don't take, don't don't try to learn everything in the next few days because that will just that could run you the risk of burnout. Right. Instead, kind of take this as a time to like wrap things up, tie up any loose ends, and then yeah. just walk in feeling good on Monday. But also knowing that if you were to retake in the future, you could do a lot more to work on games further. There are nearly 400 released games, and games actually is the most perfectible section. So if you're already close to perfect on reading comp and you could get perfect on games, you could end up with a really high score. And so I think that 170 plus is totally within your wheelhouse. I hope so. Yeah, I know. I'm like trying to get myself a budget of like minus five on games and then like minus like three-ish each on um, each section of logical reasoning. And that's like been like within like averaging across my practice tests, like just like more or less. Like obviously I've been getting a lot of like 169s, 167s. Um, but that's like what I'm trying to budget out. Yeah, that puts you very close to a 170. So if you could just get a couple more points in games yeah. by drilling a bit, you can get that 170 solidly. Yeah. All right. <laughs> awesome, Ariel. What else? What other questions do you have for me? Um, I guess when I'm like reviewing my tests, like I what I've been doing is going like through every single question, like even the ones I like got right, and just like making sure that I like. Um, but I guess like when there's ones that I like, there's some that even after like reviewing them, I'm like, I think a particular a section for me is like for those logical reasoning um, where it's like an assumption and one of the answers is like as sufficient and the other one's an assumption. And I, a lot of times like go back and forth between like trying to wrap my mind exactly around like why one is sufficient and why one is just like unnecessary and like 
those I think are also kind of a struggle section for me. Um, yeah. Yeah, just, for sure. They're, they're very sneaky. They're very sneaky at putting tempting wrong answers that are the right answer to the wrong question. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times and for a necessary assumption question stem, they will put a sufficient assumption answer choice because it contains the same phrases and it fits the argument very closely. Yeah. But it's stronger than what you need or what is required for the argument to work. So right. it's all about perspective. Necessary assumptions, you're looking for something that the argument requires but is more moderate than the argument. Sufficient assumption, you're looking for something that guarantees the argument. And so for that reason, it could actually be stronger or broad, more broad than the argument itself. Yeah. Okay. So like try looking out for like, like, yeah. Cause like even I think when, yeah, there was one that I was doing like reviewing and I, I was like looking at both of them. Like even when I like knew what the right answer was, it was still like kind of opaque to me. Like, cause they both like seemed like they would guarantee it. Um, so yeah, I guess just like a, like a somewhat rule of thumb would be like, if one is more broad, like it is probably the sufficient and I want to go with a narrower one. That's a, generally, that's a good way to think about it. Here's what, here's what I would say. Necessary assumption questions are a very specific kind of must be true question. So mm -hmm. it's like an inference you can draw from the stimulus. And it might seem so moderate that it's not exciting and you might not want to pick it for that reason, but that's exactly what you need to pick. Sufficient assumption questions, you're looking for new information that, if true, would guarantee the argument 100%, leaving no ambiguity at all. So in general, yes, for necessary assumptions, gravitate towards more moderate language. For sufficient assumptions, extreme is okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like thinking of one particular one. Maybe I can email it to you afterwards and show you kind of like what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, those are, yeah, those are generally the ones. And yeah, I mean, for the most part, like, I feel like I have a pretty good sense of like the different flavors of logical reasoning I can get. Like nothing has really thrown me off in a while. But yeah, some of them are just... The ones that are like, that are almost like mini logic games that have like a, you know, a setup of logic and it's like match the reasoning or like what must be true because of it. Like I do diagram those sometimes. And is that like a good use of my time generally? Totally fine. Yeah. Those fall within the category of the few logical reasoning questions that are worth diagramming if they're formal logic, if they have lots of conditional statements and if you have the same variables appearing in multiple clauses or multiple sentences, then yes, those are great candidates for diagramming. It's usually sufficient assumption, parallel reasoning, and must be true. Those are the cases where sometimes it will be worth diagramming. And so you'll do that on your scratch paper to the side mm -hmm. as simply as possible. And then I guess also with those, sometimes I struggle with like, if a lot of times it'll be like that form of logic, but then it will also be like some or not all. And like, how do I incorporate that into my like diagrams and my like conditional logic notation if it's just do I just like write some above it or yeah, you could you could you could just write some above it you certainly need to indicate that in some way so mm -hmm. any guarantee any full conditionals like all x's are y's of course diagram those conditionally but then for the sum or not all or most yeah just write the phrase just write the phrase and keep take that conditional quote-unquote conditional with a grain of salt because it's not a true conditional the true mm -hmm. conditionals are really what will guarantee inferences. The other ones mm -hmm. aren't as likely to. And so just, I kind of keep those separate in a way. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. And, and also, I guess, um, so sometimes I'll find myself finishing, like even like a logic game, which is I'm always the most pressed for time on. If I finish it with like one or two or even three minutes left, should I try to like use that time on like maybe like one specific question that I, I was not sure about or should I try to like hit like as many as possible and get like a little bit more sure about each of them or really try to like nail one down with that time? That's a great question. So you've completed the section. You mm -hmm. have one or two minutes remaining. If there was something in the game you just did that you're not 100% sure on, I would look at that. Alternatively, I would just put my head down and take a break. <laughs> assuming that you're going to have another section immediately because the test is grueling. You only get one break in the middle after section three. And so there aren't really any other break opportunities. And on digital, it is immediate next, next, next. With the paper, there was like a brief moment where the proctor says, put your pencils down, pick yeah. your pencils up, continue. You don't get that on digital. So taking a break is actually a reasonable course of action. Okay. 
I'm hesitant to recommend going back to previous games because you would have to mentally re-enter them and reacquaint yourself with the rules. So I don't think that's a great use of your time relative to the other options. So generally, if there was one in the game that I just did, going back over that, okay, or taking a break. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's good. Good to know. Sure, Ariel. Anything, anything else for today? Um, I guess, I don't know if there's any final tips you have. I just, I, my fingers crossed. I've been studying for a couple of months and yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's big. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Well, you've done a lot of great work along the way. I know you've been in touch for a while over the past several months. I've got a big playlist on my YouTube channel of test day prep specifically, advice related to that, like what to bring, what mm -hmm. not to bring. So I would suggest taking a look, to, a look at that and I'll send you the link to that playlist. You can check it out in case it answers any questions you might not have even thought to ask. Mm -hmm. But you've got a couple of days to think about and that's a good light way to do something else that related without actually taxing yourself too heavily by working on problems. Yeah, yeah. Great, that sounds good. Great, well, it's been great to connect with you. What would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Um, I think most like actionable, useful is like what to do with those extra couple minutes if and when I have them. Um, and generally also just like how I should pace myself over these like next like three days and like not to take two practice tests, um, <laughs> which I'll definitely do. Fantastic. All right. Well, again, I'm glad we connected. Please mm -hmm. keep in touch and let me know how it goes for you on Monday. Yeah, great. I will. Thanks. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them and feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.